Welcome to IBM Support TV, where we answer questions and share technical support information, hints and tips on IBM products. In this video, we will see how to do LDAP setup in Operational Decision Manager. When we talk about LDAP, there are two aspects to it, authentication and authorization. The authentication is done at the application server level and that configuration will be different based on which application server you are using. What it defines is who is who has the visibility or who is allowed to log in. Since this is done at the application server level, we will not be discussing that in this video. The second part is the authorization which is configured at the application level. It defines the roles or the access level for the user. This is the topic of discussion in this video. Using the Decision Center Business Console, we will see how to configure the LDAP server connection, how to import the LDAP groups and users, and how to set roles to these imported groups and users. To explain the LDAP configuration, I have set up this fictitious LDAP tree. While this is self-explanatory, just let's quickly go over it. I have an organization called demo and then I have two organizational units under it. Then under the organizational unit groups, I have another one called development under which there are two groups called ODM and BPM. Both of these are, are of type group of unique names and they contain unique members inside them. I have another group of unique names called management which is under the group's organizational unit. It again contains unique members. These unique members are the users that come from the user's organizational unit. Now let's take a look at the various attributes for the users. The important ones to note at the bottom left of the screen are CN, which is the common name, the employee number, mail, and UID. The names of these attributes could be different based on the LDAP server you are using. But these are the ones that we would be using in the LDAP configuration inside ODM. The other thing to note is the attributes for the groups, the three groups being ODM, BPM and management. The important attribute in those is CN, which is the name of the group. And the other one is the object class. We know that these are of type group of unique names. As I, as I had mentioned earlier, these contain the unique members. So the name of that attribute unique member is also important. Log into the decision center business console as a user with RTS administrator role. Click on the administration tab Ensure you are on the connection settings tab. Now click on the plus sign to start creating a new connection. The new connection window opens up. Enter a connection name of your choice. Your LDAP administrator should be able to provide you the LDAP URL. Along with this, the LDAP administrator should also provide the bind domain name and the password for this connection. Now let's figure out what values go in the rest of the fields. Let's take a look at our earlier LDAP tree. The two white boxes are of importance. The one at the bottom left is for the users and the other one is for the groups. The attribute names are of importance because we would be using those. Another thing to remember is that our groups are under the organizational unit called groups, which is under the organization called demo. We would need this path later. The group path defines the value in the group search base. For the rest of the values, please note that the attribute names I have used may be different than what you use in your LDAP server. We have three groups in our LDAP tree, ODM, BPM, and management. We do not want to import the BPM group. Hence, we omit it from the group search filter so that only ODM and management groups would be found. The group name attribute is the attribute that defines the names of the groups. As shown in the picture, it is CN. 
the group member attribute is the attribute that defines the members of a group. As seen in the picture, it is unique member. The user login ID attribute is the attribute that you use to log in. It varies by organizations. Some use the email ID to log in, whereas some others use the user ID. For this video, I am using the mail attribute, which means I will use the email ID to log in to decision center. The username attribute is the attribute that defines the full name of the user. Generally, this is CN. The last one is optional. It holds the name of the attribute that holds the email ID of the user. Now that we have added all the values, click on Done. Our LDAP connection is done and successful. Now let's try to add some LDAP groups. Click on the Groups tab and click on the down arrow to import the groups. As you can see, only ODM and management groups are shown. Let's import the management group. Click on the import groups only button. You will see that the management group shows up in the list. Now let's go to the users tab and import the users. You will see that only the management group shows up because we haven't imported ODM yet. Let's select all the users and import them. As you can see, all the users from this group show up over here. Now let's import the other group, which is ODM. Click on the down arrow and select the ODM group. This time, let's click on the import groups and users button. If now you go to the users tab, you will see that all the users from the ODM group have already been imported. To assign roles to these imported groups, click on the pencil icon next to the group name and from the roles section, click on the plus button and select the roles from the drop down. Whichever roles you select here, will be applied to all the users who are members of that group. Now let's log in as an LDAP user. We can successfully log in as an LDAP user. This completes the process to set up LDAP from Decision Center Business Console. Thanks for watching this episode of IBM Support TV. Please leave a comment with topics you would like to see in future episodes. Until then, stay tuned.